moving to the uh, um, from the esophagus to the uh, the second part, which is uh, distal to it um, in the foregut, which is the stomach. Stomach is important, and uh, in the uh, fourth week, it started as a fusiform dilation. Um, uh, uh, appears um, in the caudal part of the fore um, gut that indicates the site of future uh, stomach. This dilatation, um, first of all, it's in the midline. So, for example, if this is the imperio, so it's in the midline, uh, as you see. And the enlargement, the most interesting thing is that you have to look to this figure now. The enlargement is anterior posterior, or let us say ventrodorsally. That means the enlargement is not uh, on both sides, not on the right and left, right? Not laterally, but the enlargement is anterior posterior, right? Like somebody has a pulley and has a, um, um, uh, uh, a large pack, for example, right? So this is the this is the idea of the stomach. If you look at it like laterally, you will see it's like anterior. The enlargement is anterior posterior, right at this stage. Now during the next two weeks, the um, uh, dorsal border you see here grows much faster than the ventral. So this the dorsal border. Of course, you are looking to the stomach laterally, right? Um, so the uh, dorsal border grows faster, creating a greater curvature, while the ventral border will form the lesser one, the lesser curvature. Now, as stomach enlarges, and because of the unequal growth of different parts in the walls of stomach and because of development of different organs in the uh, in the imperio this creates a kind of um, uh, uh, a factor to help the stomach to rotate right in which now the stomach will rotate 90 degrees clockwise that means right around the around its longitudinal axis how's that uh, let me show you here in this uh, in this the stomach was like the stomach let me show you the stomach was like that anterior posterior right anterior posterior but now the rotation will be like that 90 degrees so until it approximate this um, position so it was like this then 90 degrees rotation clockwise it becomes like this right so this is the um, uh, uh, the position of the stomach in the adult right so this rotation back to this rotation uh, so again, this is a cross section of the imperio. We mentioned that the stomach, which is like a, a tube that uh, in the midline, as you see here, now let us start the journey of rotation following these arrows, right? So it rotates 90 degrees clockwise around its longitudinal axis. So this is, uh, for example, this is the axis. So it moves around it. So as a result, what will happen now before that look at the stomach so it has now before rotation it has the right surface and left surface and you have dorsal border and ventral border it's like a tube in the midline with rotation now the left surface now becomes anteriorly right the vent the left surface now become once rotated just twist it like this so now it becomes anteriorly so the left surface now it becomes the ventral surface while the right surface now it goes back so it becomes the posterior or dorsal surface 
So the right becomes dorsal, the left becomes ventral. What else? Um, the ventral border moves to the right because, you know, this is the right, right? This is the left. So the ventral border now moved, it becomes right, right? Look at it here. So it's the right. And the um, while the left, um, while the dorsal border now moves to the uh, left. This is the rotation of the uh, stomach. So what's the significance of this rotation? Yes, it's rotated. So then what? Yes, the the um, as I mentioned before the rotation, the two ends of the stomach. That means this uh, of, um, uh, the the, end, uh, the cardiac end and pyloric end. They were. I would like to adjust it a little bit. They were in the med median plane in the median plane in the middle right while during the rotation during the, let us make okay let us say, right so during the okay during the rotation so the cranial end moves to the left yes and slightly inferiorly that means once rotated so the uh, cranial end moves a little bit to the left to this side that means during the rotation it moved a little bit like to the left and inferiorly while the caudal end this end um, when, when, you, when, it's, when it's rotated it moved to the right and superiorly this is what i meant by these statements now after rotation the stomach assumes its final position now with its long axis now long axis of the stomach is you know almost perpendicular to the uh, maybe like this it's a kind of perpendicular to the long axis of your body. Now, again, back again, what's the significance of that? Indeed, you uh, maybe know that the vagus nerves innervate the stomach and other structure in the abdomen. So, now let me again rotate the stomach back before rotation. Sorry. So let us draw now the right vagus nerve here and left vagus nerve here. So this is right vagus and this is left vagus. Now with rotation, now what will happen? That the right vagus becomes posterior. So the right vagus should the right vagus this one should go back to the back and the left vagus now is the um anterior one you know what i mean so the rotation um changed the even not just the um uh, location of the nails but also the orientation and where they are located and the names of them so this explains why the um, uh, left vagus this this one the left vagus that was of course the left now it's anteriorly right right uh, uh, and covers the or innervates the anterior um, uh, wall of the uh, stomach while the right vagus that was on the right side now as you see here with the rotation of the stomach now becomes the posterior vagal trunk and innervates the posterior wall of the stomach so you know that the stomach and from the beginning it's connected to the posterior abdominal wall by mesogastrium mesogastrium so during the um, 
uh, development of the stomach and during the rotation as well there is a kind of a cliffs created in this mesogastrium right so these cliffs create a kind of a cavity here this cavity called omental pursa or lesser sac which is behind the stomach right so with the rotation of the stomach the um, this pursa or mental pursa expands transversely and cranially right superior and inferior and to lateral uh, side which is between the stomach and the uh, posterior abdominal wall look at the um, look at the rotation of the stomach when the stomach rotated as you know so it pulls the um, mesogastrium with it and this creates or it helps in enlarge the omental bursa or the lesser sac as you see here so it becomes larger and larger with the also further development of the stomach <coughs> The omental bursa not just widen laterally, but also cranially, um, in which you see like it, um, deep in there, between layers of a greater something called a greater omentum, four layers. So, um, let us look to the adult, which is um, I I like to use it before explain how it's created in the epilogy. This is the liver, this is the diaphragm and this is the um, uh, the stomach so the space that we are talking about is located behind the stomach and this is the posterior abdominal wall so this space in a green color is the lesser sac is the lesser sac uh, or mental pursa so this is the lesser sac behind the stomach and between the stomach and posteriorly the anterior the posterior abdominal wall so it extends superiorly until it's stopped by the diaphragm and inferiorly it extends into between the four layers of a greater omentum uh, that form the inferior recess of it so it has a superior recess and inferior recess uh, you know later the omental pursa um, the uh, greater momentum will unite and obliterate so the space will be obliterated anyway so back again here this is the stomach and this is the posterior abdominal wall so the space behind the stomach and and anterior to uh, uh, posterior abdominal wall this space is the lesser sac extends superiorly and start by the diaphragm and inferiorly uh, it extends into greater momentum at this stage it's still unfused layers right but then it will be fused and obliterated but anyway the lesser sac will still exist behind the stomach there now uh, let us continue the journey from the esophagus and then the stomach and now the continuation is the duodenum, which is formed during the fourth uh, week. But it formed, you know, that the duodenum uh, composed from four parts. It's like S shape, right? Like C shape, right? It's like C uh, shape in which the proximal two parts originates from the foregut while the distal two parts originate from midgut that means the duodenum is the border or it formed from foregut and midgut so the junction between the two parts directly distal uh, to the origin of liver but say this is the liver but so the junction of two parts of duodenum just distal to the um, origin of liver buds this is the or the uh, liver bud or the hepatic diverticulum right and this is the uh, distal end of foregut and this is the beginning of the midgut that gives the second half of the duodenum small intestine uh, including i mean jejunum 
um, uh, idiom all the way until the uh, right two third of transverse colon. Anyway, the duodenum comes from foregut and midgut. This is very important. Why it's important? Because you know that the foregut. Uh, the blood supply for gut from celiac trunk, while the blood supply for midgut is from the superior mesenteric artery. That means the duodenum that comp that formed from foregut and midgut. That means you have to expect that the blood supply comes from the celiac trunk and from the superior mesenteric artery, as you see here. Now, because as I mentioned, um, the uh, uh, let me show you here. Um, um, so let me erase this. Sorry. So anyway, I want to explain this. So look at the stomach and duodenum. It was like that in the midline, while the stomach rotated ninety degree clockwise also it rotates the duodenum with it right this is the idea that i'm trying to uh, explain it um, but here my friends when you look to the uh, duodenum here is like better view of uh, uh, duodenum in which it's like convinced or uh, convinced uh, anteriorly here is like better view this is the stomach you know and this is the a duodenal loop in which it's convex anteriorly which is like c-shaped loop now the duodenal loop is rotated with the stomach to the right you see the direction with clockwise and it comes um, now to lie on the posterior abdominal uh, wall behind the peritoneum that's why mainly it's a retro peritoneal um, uh, structure except you know the fair mainly the uh, um, part from the first part of the duodenum but mainly let's say now it becomes now retroperitoneal behind the peritoneum of course with the pancreas because also the pancreas rotated with the stomach so the stomach rotated and um, it rotates with it the duodenal loop and the uh, Bancarias. So again, similar to the story of esophagus, during the fifth and sixth week, the lumen of the duodenum like temporarily closed, obliterated, because of the proliferation of the epithelial cells. But this is again uh, temporarily, because in the process of recanalization, there is a degeneration of the epithelial cells in the lumen, make like a cavity inside the duodenum, and make it like again a hollow um, a structure. So, uh, of course, by the end of the imperionic period, which is close to the period of recanalization of the esophagus, but here we are talking about the um, duodenum. Now, again, similar to the esophagus, sometime, but this is uh, really common, uh, uh, there is congenital anomalies because of the either failure, complete failure of recanalization, or sometime incomplete recanalization. So, if there is incomplete recanalization, it will be like a stenosis, right, in the duodenum, which is similar to the esophageal stenosis. This is incomplete. There is a canalization, recanalization, but it's incomplete. But if the if there is complete failure to recanalization, that means you will get duodenal atresia. Duodenal atresia. That means complete obstruction, which is autosomal recessive um, inheritance. Right. 